welcome back to my channel um if this is your first time seeing the video my name is shannon welcome to shannon dtv um and on instagram i am miss roberts classroom and the shannon roberts now today is gonna be like a story time of um dealing with difficult parents and i saw a lot of educators they were doing um just tips on dealing with difficult parents well i actually wanted to come to you and tell you a story time of when i dealt with an irate parent and how i handled it what actually happened and give you some quick tips about how you can handle it dealing with an irate parent okay so a little back history on me i am um i don't mind telling my age i'm 28 i teach kindergarten i taught kindergarten for three years and this was actually last year so it was my second year of teaching kindergarten when this incident happened so i can remember the day just really really well because i guess it just stood out to me that something like this was happening to me so um i woke up feeling really really good okay so i could just remember the day going really really well and so that morning i woke up and i was actually feeling really really good like i was um i think i woke up on time i was at work at a good time you know it was just a good morning um my son got up without me having to fight with him and brushing his teeth and putting his clothes on so it was just a really good morning you know everything the drive to school and work went good everything cool so i get um to school and my children are sitting out because they usually line up in the hallway before we come in so the students are lined up they're sitting nice and quiet they they are obeying the uh, hall monitors and doing what they are supposed to be doing so at this time it's like 7 um i would say maybe 7 15 7 20 and i'm in my classroom and uh that morning i had breakfast i had some cereal for breakfast so i had brought my almond milk and i had brought my um uh, i think i was eating like some raisin bran or something i don't know and so it was some type of cereal and so i was eating my cereal and i get a knock on the door the students don't have to be in class like they don't send the students in until 7 30 and so it was like 7 20 at this time and so i'm just kind of like who is it so i look out and it was a parent and this parent the things that i hear from coming from pre-k i never take it into consideration because it's always a new year it's always a new start and i'm not that teacher that they had last year so i try to give everyone the benefit of that i try to give everyone a chance i don't i don't hold grudges based on what a previous teacher said about a child or a parent however i should have took heed to the information that i got from this the teacher so the teacher informed me that the student was moved out of her class at the beginning of the year because he was um picking on someone but the mother thought that someone was picking on him so they moved him to another teacher's classroom and um the other teacher just think it was like a miscommunication which it possibly could be now this student he's not just the smartest student you know the brightest one in my class but he definitely wasn't one of the ones that i had to worry about and as far as his behavior he wasn't the sweetest kid and he wasn't the one that you know the most dependable that i can count on him to do something but if i needed him to do something you know he could he could get through it you know so i mean he, he was an average kid he was an average joe and so um i had heard about this particular parent and i just you know I, I make my own decisions i make my my relationship with people and my experience with people about how i view them so i try not to use that as an influence so when this parent comes to my door the look on her face is like like oh she was the shit okay before I open this door, Miss Roberts, you are Miss, you are Mrs. Roberts 
right now. You not Shannon. You you not on the streets. You are in your kindergarten classroom and you are Mrs. Roberts right now. And as an educator, you have to be that educator. You have to have tunnel vision when you go into certain situations dealing with certain people. Okay, especially in your school, in in, in, in your work environment. And so I open the door. Good morning. How are you? We need to talk. Now, one thing that I I think a preconceived notion that people have, just in people in general about me, is that I look young, so I must be young. So you're gonna treat me like I'm a kid as well. And um I she is she was a much older parent like she i would say probably early 50s late 40s because i do know this is her uh second round of having kids like her other kids were all grown and i think maybe she got remarried or something and had some more children anyway so this guy this little boy was her second round of kids and um she just came to me real mean and real nasty real rude real ugly but because i am who i am and i'm not a mean person i'm not a, a cold-hearted person or mean spirit or anything like that um and i'm professional i knew to keep this conversation as professional as possible and shout out to the front office i mean my front office holds it down because they will not send a parent to the room without you knowing so um before i she came down like i knew she was coming i didn't know why she was coming but i knew she was coming and um when i saw it heard that knock and saw that look oh i was like oh this is about to go down so anyway um i was prepared for her but i was not expecting to get what i got from her so she was she I, I invited her in and she came in and like i say the children don't come into 7 30 so it's like 7 22 at this point and so at 7 30 we're gonna have to cut this conversation short because i got kids like I can't sit here and talk to you and I got a room full of five and six year olds and I'm definitely not going to have a heated conversation with you. That's number one and not in front of these kids. So she comes in and she's like, um, somebody cut my baby hair. Now, this is a little boy and he has really long hair. Like his hair is probably longer than my hair. He has really long hair, maybe like shoulder length hair. And she proceeds to, I mean, with the finger. I mean, all the works, the neck rolling, the head, the finger, the, you know, the eyes, and I mean, just the facial expressions. And all the while, I'm like, that's unnecessary, ma'am. Like, calm down. Like, this ain't that. Like, I, like, what are you doing i'm your child's teacher and so she was just like basically in so many words she goes on to say um somebody cut my baby hair and i don't appreciate it and he ain't never had a haircut ever in his life and and what really like kind of distraught it broke the camel's back is she told me she used the pissed off word she said and i'm pissed off Ma'am, you're standing in the middle of your kindergarten nurse teacher classroom and you're using words such as pissed off. Okay, that's not it. That's not it though. She goes on to say, um, that she made me mad. I mean, like, really, like potty mouth like we don't talk like that and so i had to kind of like like take a deep breath because i'm thinking you cannot be serious you cannot be standing here and cussing me out <laughs> i was like you cussing me out and so she's like um just just 
she got she just kept going on about how upset she was and how mad she was and how uh you if you, if i can't I, another thing that was like took it there was she told me if i don't know how to um control the students using scissors then i need to just take all the scissors up at the tables lady we're not gonna do this we're not gonna do this because at the beginning of the year and this this, probably, this was like the beginning of the year this was probably like in september maybe october at the beginning of the year we we go through how to use the supplies what we use the supplies for you know all of that like we teach routines and procedures as if it's a lesson like I'm, we're not just in here just i got some scissors i got some scissors i'm gonna cut cut today i'm gonna cut we're not doing it like ma'am don't do that and so a million things are running through my mind like i can't believe that she has a nerve to talk to me like this like who does she think she is better yet who does she think i am but as a professional, I had to like be the adult in the situation. And I'm just kind of like, um, you know, I do apologize that your child's hair got cut. However, we have top policy and procedure and routines when we're using the scissors. And the students know not to use the scissors when, you know, we're only cutting paper. They are to only use the scissors. We don't cut other things. And we'll we'll talk to the, all the students about it to reassure that they understand when to use the scissors and to make you feel better because i don't want you to leave here and still have an uneasy feeling about him being in class with scissors i will take them up and we will have a specific drawer that we put the scissors in and when we need the scissors we'll get them out the drawer and she was just kind of like almost like she still wasn't satisfied like I mean, it was just so petty. And I want, like, the amount of hair that was cut. I'm going to get my iPhone charger. Okay. This is my charger. The amount of hair that was cut was probably, like, the length from the charging port just to the end of the the charger. Like, right here. Literally. Can y'all see that? Literally, like, right here. It was probably, like, this much hair. Okay. And I told her, you know... I'm sorry that you felt like this, but things happen in kindergarten and we try to, you know, reconcile and move on. And she goes on to tell me that, uh, well, I'm going to talk to the principal about the principal about this because if it was my son, then y'all would be calling me. And she was really harboring feelings from what happened last year and because I didn't, I didn't know what actually happened last year until after the fact i just heard that you know you watch out for this parent and so i was kind of like we haven't called you about anything this year i'm not exactly sure what you're talking about and she was like oh uh pre-k knows that they, they always um up to something something to that effect like they they always um calling me about something that he's done but now when he's the victim um, I don't get a phone call. I don't get that courtesy. And I'm just kind of like, nobody stabbed him with the scissors. But if we want to play the victim role, let's go. And so I told her, like, I, the, my principal and I, we have a really good relationship and a working relationship. And it's no, like... I trust my principal and I'm, I'm pretty sure she trusts me and so I don't have anything to hide and so I told her I said well if that would make you feel better I would definitely advise you to go see the principal and you can um put this on you know record or you know make a documentation of what happened and she was like well I do so anyway long story short she went to the office after she left my class but um the principal was actually tied up with something else so she left the school but she called back so she called a principal not exactly sure what her and the principal discussed probably something similar to what she and i discussed earlier and um so the principal comes and talks to me and she's like miss roberts what happened and i tell her what happened and she's just kind of like okay well let me talk to the little boy come to find out y'all come to find out he cut his own hair I'm 
I'm gonna just sit that right there. You need me to say it again? He cut his own hair. But you coming up in my room fussing and cussing. So, you know, after he talked to the principal, and the principal was like, well, what is going on? Who cut your hair? What happened? He says he cut his own hair. And he, he was just, like, candid about it. And she said, well, why did you cut your hair? And he said, because it's long, and people make fun of me, and I look like a girl. And so then we had to go through, you know, you know you're not a girl you're a boy you can't be concerned about other people say i know sometimes it hurts your feelings you know boosting his confidence because at this point it's opening the door to something else it's not just he cutting his own hair because he mad or he bad or he he just felt like it he cut his hair because he has a feeling about that's associated with his hair and you know that's something that I, I can't overstep my banners. I can't say, well, you need to cut his hair because he don't like long hair. That's not for me to say. That's a parental right that she has. If she does my place to say you need to do this as a parent because it's affecting this in the school when you have other reason that you're doing what you're doing. And so, like I say, it's, it's not up to me. I have to remember my role as the teacher and understand that I have boundaries as the teacher. And, you know, in that situation, I, I didn't have any um, ill feelings toward the child because children cannot understand that what their parents do can affect them and as an adult i have to be the adult um she did not you know give me any type of apology as to i'm sorry i talked to him about it nothing none whatsoever as a matter of fact she defended her son and she went on as far as to say well he's never done that at home or he's never expressed anything like that at home so i'm not sure kind of like almost like i'm not sure y'all know what y'all are talking about and i dropped it because the thing about it is you're going to encounter things like this as an educator you're going to encounter irate parents or difficult parents or or people that's hard to work with whether it's in your school environment or outside your school environment in the district so i mean you you pick your battles and i'm not one to just go back and forth with a person and so i dropped it and i moved on because my job is to educate him and to help him grow as a student um and when it came to you know communicating with her i did the same thing i did with all my other parents i called her when i needed her um i sent notes when i needed to if i needed to inform her about something i would and it, it was not like a i'm gonna die chuck because she cussed at me or i don't like her so i'm gonna treat her son bad nope we're gonna keep rolling that's all we're gonna do and so for my educators out there, if you are dealing with a difficult parent or someone is just, you know, hard to get along with or that comes to your classroom irate, the first thing you do, always remember, you are the professional. You are the educator. Now, I understand that you are still a person and you have buttons that people push, but in that situation, you are the professional you act accordingly now you know it's a little different when they put their hands on you we're not even gonna go there because you know you see in the news and in the media and social media and stuff how people get crazy but we're not going there we, we're not even gonna escalate the situation to go there number two keep the issue at hand do not go back and forth with parents as far as you know tit for tat well i'm telling you what it is and not you got you can't tell me this and who you think you talk no keep the issue at hand the issue was the little boy's hair was cut how can we resolve it right now as an educator what can i do as a parent what can you do and that is why i suggested taking the scissors up and reteaching the lesson as far as when to use scissors and how to use scissors because that made her feel more comfortable. I, well, I was hoping it would make her feel more comfortable as a parent leaving him in here with scissors. And there was a, a solution to the problem. All right. Number three. And another thing I would also is just to try to be understanding to the parents. Now, to me, I, I cut my son's hair. 
I'm not, I don't let his hair grow out. I don't know um, her reasons for letting her son grow his hair out. And so I cannot understand why it was such a big deal that this much of his hair got cut. However, his hair still got cut. And as a parent, I, I can't relate. And as a teacher, I try to relate. I try to say, try, I always try to say to myself, okay, I don't really know why. However, this parent is feeling some type of way. So I need to try to understand. Even if I don't understand, I need to try to reason with this parent. So whatever issue we have can be squashed and done and over with and because the ultimate goal is always to educate the students the ultimate goal is for him to be there to learn and if she felt like that that was hindering him from learning whether i agreed or disagreed she felt like that it was such a big deal that she had to come to the school call back to the principal and say whatever she had to say okay well it's not a big deal to me but i need to rectify the situation so i always try to be understanding and I hope my story time and my little quick tips helped you. And tell me in the comments some, uh, something that happened to you. If you're educated, something that happened to you that was like really ridiculous dealing with an irate parent. Or if you're a parent, tell me something that your teachers, your child's teacher did that you can't believe happened. Um, and you know, because I, I am on the, I straddle the fence. I say because I am a parent and I'm also a teacher so sometimes I can kind of understand where the parents coming from and then sometimes I'm like no my teacher head is on I don't get that and so and so thanks for watching and if you like what you see go ahead and subscribe and come back for more see you next time bye